O God, hear, hear our prayer, and, and let our cry come unto you. Bless our diocese of Savannah, with many vocations to the priesthood, diaconate, and religious life. Give the men and women you call the light to understand your gift, and the love to follow always in the footsteps of your priestly son. Amen. We join in singing the processional hymn, which can be found in the hymnal number 424, Festival Canticle, Worthy is Christ. Jesus Christ risen from the dead. Let us begin as we ask God to forgive our sins and give us that gift of purity of heart. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what, what I have done, done and what, what I have failed, failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels, angels and saints, and you, my, my brothers, brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy.
us year by year with the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection, graciously grant that by celebrating these present festivities, we may merit through them to reach eternal joys. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Peter and John were going up to the temple area for the three o'clock hour of prayer, and a man, crippled from birth, was carried and placed at the gate of the temple called the Beautiful Gate, every day to beg for alms from people who entered the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked for alms. But Peter, looking intently at him, as did John, and said, Look at us. He paid attention to them, expecting to receive something from them. Peter said, I have neither silver nor gold, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene, rise and walk. Then Peter took him by the right hand and raised him up, and immediately his feet and ankles grew strong. He leaped up, stood, and walked around, and went into the temple with them walking and jumping and praising God. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the one who used to sit begging at the beautiful gate of the temple, and they were filled with amazement and astonishment at what had happened to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Rejoice, Rejoice O hearts that seek the Lord. Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, invoke his name, make known among the nations his deeds. Sing to him, sing his praise, proclaim all his wondrous deeds. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Glory in his name, rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Look to the Lord in his strength, seek to serve him constantly. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. You descendants of Abraham, his servants, sons of Jacob, his chosen one. He, the Lord, is our God. Throughout the earth, his judgments prevail. Rejoice, Rejoice O hearts that seek, seek the Lord. He remembers forever his covenant, which he made binding for a thousand generations, which he entered into with Abraham and by his oath to Isaac. Rejoice, Rejoice O hearts that seek, seek the Lord. seven miles from Jerusalem called Emmaus, and they were conversing about all the things that had occurred. And it happened that while they were conversing and debating, Jesus himself drew near and walked with them, but their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing as you walk along? They stopped, looking downcast. One of them, named Cleophas, said to him in reply, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know of the things that have taken place there in these days? And he replied to them, What sort of things? They said to him, 
the things that happened to Jesus the Nazarene, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, how our chief priests and rulers both handed him over to a sentence of death and crucified him. But we were hoping that he would be the one to redeem Israel. And besides all this, it is now the third day since this took place. Some women from our group, however, have astounded us. They were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. They came back and reported they had indeed seen a vision of angels who announced that he was alive. Then some of those with us went to the tomb and found things just as the women had described, but him they did not see. And he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are! How slow of heart to believe all that the prophet spoke! Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them what referred to him in all the scriptures. As they approached the village to which they were going, he gave the impression that he was going on farther. But they urged him, Stay with us, for it is nearly evening, and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. And it happened that while he was with them at table, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. With that their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, but he vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he spoke to us on the way and opened the scriptures to us? So they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem, where they found gathered together the eleven and those with them who were saying, The Lord has truly been raised and has appeared to Simon. Then the two recounted what had taken place on the way and how he was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. One of the expressions that we hear quite often is the road to Emmaus, or we have a retreat called Emmaus Days. And basically, it's because as these disciples were walking that seven miles, they, they either rode a horse or walked, and most people did not have enough money to have a horse. They would walk, and as they were walking toward Emmaus, they met the risen Jesus, and their eyes were opened, weren't they? Now, in the beginning when they met Jesus, their eyes were closed. It sounds familiar, doesn't it? Sometimes we bring our children, our grandchildren to church, we teach them about Christ, and, you know, they kind of shake their heads, shake their heads, okay, I understand, I understand. And then drift away, sometimes, in high school, or college. And, and then something happens at some point, and all of a sudden, they go to a retreat, they have some type, oftentimes some kind of a, of a tragedy happens in their life, they come back to God, and all of a sudden their eyes are open, as, as I was speaking about this weekend, Suffering, we always are changed by suffering. We either become closer to God or farther from Him, but we don't stay the same. And so, why does the God, in the beginning the Gospel says um, that their eyes were prevented from recognizing Him. Almost as if this is orchestrated by God. God is holding His hands over their eyes so they can't see Jesus and who He is. And then, at some designated time, He removes His hand, doesn't He? Kind of like when Moses, when God passed before Moses, remember, he held his hand over Moses' eyes, right? And God does that to us as well. People say, well, why doesn't God just, he's got all this grace. Why doesn't he just give everybody the grace, open our eyes and the eyes of our hearts, so that we'll follow him very happily and peacefully all the way to heaven? You have to ask God that. God knows what he's doing. He has a plan for each of us and how he reveals himself and unveils himself to each of us. Easter is a time of grace. What a great time today during Holy Communion to pray for your loved ones who are not coming to Mass or have drifted away from faith and Catholic faith or Christianity in general. 
This is a great time to ask the risen Jesus to open their eyes, the eyes of their hearts, so they understand and they can see who he is and how he is the answer to every single human heart. In the Catholic Church, this is why we have Mass. This Emmaus reasoning, this Emmaus story right here, is why in the Catholic Church every Mass has the Liturgy of the Word and the Liturgy of the Eucharist. He opened their minds to the Scriptures, Liturgy of the Word, and then He opened their eyes when they received the Eucharist. And that's why every Mass from the very beginning involves these two ways the risen Jesus opens our minds and our hearts. invite you now to stand as we lift up our prayers to God, our Heavenly Father. With hope in the resurrection, we offer our prayers to the Lord. For leaders of the church, may God's wisdom flow in and through them in their witness to God's saving love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For areas of the world afflicted by violence, may God's hand raise up leaders who offer peaceful solutions. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For families facing conflict, may the Holy Spirit lead them in embracing understanding and reconciliation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For our faith community, may we receive eyes of faith to recognize the face of Christ in others. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all who have died with Christ, may they rise with him to eternal life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. And this Mass is offered for the intentions and healing of Paulina to will. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. We pray for the end of coronavirus, for all those who are suffering from this illness, for their families, for those who have died. And we pray for our scientists and our doctors to to come up with a vaccine very soon to end this suffering throughout our world. And we pray for all those who are suffering economically or, or emotionally because of the results of this virus, that the Lord will pour his Easter grace upon every one of them and every one of us and strengthen us. Let us pray for the Lord. Heavenly Father, we love you. We trust in you. And we ask these and all our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, risen from the dead, for he is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name. For our good and the good of all his holy church. Please stand. We receive, we pray, O Lord, the sacrifice which has redeemed the human race. And be pleased to accomplish in us salvation of mind and body. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. At all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with pastoral joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. <laughs> In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity 
together with Francis, our Pope, and Gregory Dunn, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them to the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. With him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. <laughs> Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my lady, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. you to bow your heads now as we pray our spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in this blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. And since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least 
fiercely into my heart. Lord, we love you. We desire to be one with you. We want to be one with you in mind, heart, soul, and body. We invite you to come be one with us and give us your grace, your strength, and your salvation. Jesus, never permit us to be separated from you. Let us pray. We pray, O oh Lord, that the reverent reception of the sacrament of your Son may cleanse us from our old ways and transform us into a new creation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruins of souls. Amen. Please join and sing the recessional hymn, which can be found in the hymnal number 415. Alleluia, alleluia. Number 415.